record. Okay. So then on Tuesday, all we'll be doing is the review. And then Wednesday, you do have the choice. You can show up in person at eight, anywhere really between eight and 10 to take your, so you just have to be finished by the end of class period, right? Um, or you can choose to do it online. And then in that case, you have until 11.59 PM to take it in your paperwork, okay? So you do have that option for Wednesday. And then Thursday, of course, we do not meet. That is going to be Thanksgiving. And then the next week, we're just gonna concentrate on that exam, okay? So we'll review everything for the final. Um, and it's gonna be interesting because we've covered so much, right? And we actually covered two courses worth of material. This final is only on the 14-4 material. So you'll get to see what that means or what that looks like at a hindsight when you get to see that review, okay? Um, da -da. Just in case if you were curious about the final review or you wanted to look at it beforehand, um, you can get to it. I think it's near the schedule. Uh, there it is. So right here under course policies at the bottom of course policies, you'll see final exam and then it'll have that review right there. That is the review that I'm gonna be working on in class, okay? But I do believe there are like 50 something problems on it. So it's gonna take us a while, okay? Um, which is great because we'll have that whole week to get it done. Now, for today, we're going to finish up with 10.3. We talked about how to get the inverse, and I think we even did an example where we found the inverse. But what we haven't done is we haven't gotten to that whole, you know, the end game here. And that was to be able to use an inverse to solve a system, okay? And so you had to remember that if you had a system like this, what they're doing is that they're applying the A inverse on both sides, but on the left-hand side, because we already know that matrix multiplication, it matters the order, right? So if you multiply the A inverse on the left-hand side, what you end up getting is this turns into the identity, which means you just have X. And then on the right-hand side, you have the A inverse times the B. So we need to know how to find this inverse in order to find this product to give us the answer, okay? So we are gonna go through the whole process. We're not gonna try to shortcut it. Um, I noticed in your homework though, some of the problems, um, some of the problems in the homework give you the inverse already and they just say, use this inverse to find the answer. If they give you the inverse already, All you need to do is take that inverse, whatever it is, and multiply it by the constants. Okay, so you need these guys over here, right? That's all you need to do if they give you the inverse. Okay, it's really just a multiplication problem. But if they don't give you the inverse, that's where it becomes a little bit trickier because we have to actually go in and find it. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is you want to write this as a matrix form but not the augmented matrix because the augmented matrix we already know has everything all in one box right in one matrix and there's no x y's and z's or anything like that in the augmented matrix what you're doing is you're just putting the equation in its matrix form so when you're done you have an actual equation okay you have all the coefficients over here notice that those are all the coefficients right you're missing the y so there's a zero for the y at the bottom then you're gonna get multiplied by all your variables. So these different variables go in a column here. Okay. So instead of having X, Y, Z, like I would label at the top, they have them on the side. Then notice that their constants just go in its own column as well, okay? Then the goal is to go ahead and figure out what the inverse is. Once I know what the inverse is, all I have to do is take that inverse and multiply it by the constant. Um, thing. And so I'm looking for where they have the answer. Here it is. So notice that they take the inverse that they say is the inverse and then they multiply it by the constants. And then I actually worked out the multiplication, right? Because you're going to be doing 15 times 10,000, which is this. And then you're going to be doing negative 200 times 730, which is that. And then you got to do negative two times zero, which is that, right? And you add them all together 
and you get this number. So that's just the multiplication process. But what I didn't like about this problem was that they went from here <laughs> and then just told you what the inverse was, right? There's a bunch of steps going on in between here and here, aren't there? Like gobs, like this many, okay? There's a lot going on. So I just wanted to walk it through it. I didn't want to waste too much time on the entire thing, but I will walk you through it. So all I've done is taken their coefficient matrix right here. It's all the same coefficients as they had. And then I put the identity on this side. That's the process, right, to find an inverse. Your goal is to make this side look like the identity. And as soon as the left side looks like the identity, the right-hand side is your inverse, okay? So the first thing I did was I did not like these decimals at all. And anytime you have fractions or decimals, you can get rid of them like straight away, okay? For fractions, we know how to do that already. We've been multiplying by the common denominator, right? So if these were all fractions, I would multiply the whole row by whatever that common denominator is. But for here, for decimals, what you do is you count the decimal places. And the highest number of decimal places is the amount of zeros that you have to multiply by. When I say like you're going to multiply by 10 or 100 or 1,000 and so forth, okay? So in this case, I noticed that these two numbers have three decimal places, whereas this one only has two but I have to go with the larger number of decimal places, which was three. So then that's why there's three zeros when I decide to multiply by this, okay? So I have to actually multiply by a thousand. When you do that, this 0 0.06 becomes 60, this one becomes 75, this one becomes 95, zero stays zero, the one turns into a thousand, and then the zero stays a zero, okay? So that's all I had done so far. Then my next goal would have been to get this guy into a one, but he's already one, right? So then my next goal was to turn these two guys into zeros. And so I did my two operations here to get those zeros, okay? So the first one I did is I knew I needed a negative 60 in order to get a zero. So I did negative 60 times row one plus the second row. So here's all of these numbers multiplied by negative 60. And then there's row two exactly the way it was. And then I just combined them, right? And what does that give me? That gives me my new row two, because the point was to get a zero here, right? So once I have that, I replaced that row two with all of those values. I just put an arrow there to indicate that. Then the same thing for this one, I need a negative one. So we multiplied the top guy by negative one, and then we added the row three, and that will give me my new row three. And so same thing here, I multiplied all these guys by negative one. I wrote row three, which was this thing underneath. And then we did all the combinations and we got this, okay? Um, next, I wanted to get a one in this spot, but I had a 15 in this spot. So my goal was to get a one. I could have divided by 15, the problem was is that this would have given me a reduced fraction, this would have given me an actual whole number, and this one gave me a fraction, and it did not reduce, okay? It was like thirds or something like that. It wasn't like a nice, cute little decimal number that I could use, right? I don't like those kinds of numbers. So if I can avoid them, I try to, okay? So what I chose to do is I can't swap the top one because it's got the one where it's supposed to be, right? I only have an option between these two because they have the zeros where they're supposed to be. So what I decided to do was switch these guys because this is a one, it's just the wrong sign, right? So I swapped those two and this is all my choices, right? You don't have to make the same choices, you could still get the same answer, okay? You could have chose to divide by 15 and just dealt with the fractions and it might not have bothered you, okay? I chose to switch the rows and so I wrote that here. So then now I've got that negative one there and the 15s at the bottom with all the other guys, okay? Then from here, in order for me to make this new guy a one, I just had to multiply by negative or divide by a negative, same thing, okay? So it's gonna change all of these signs and there's the signs, the new signs, right? Then I used this step to change this one to a zero and to change this one to a zero. So I had to do negative one times row two plus that guy to give me a new top row. And then I had to do negative 15 times row two 
plus the third row so I could get a new third row. So I did my math over here. I will post it. So if you like really want to analyze it, right? <laughs> you can, because I am going pretty fast in here. Um, once I did that, I was able to replace the top row with these entries and then replace the bottom row with these entries here. Then my last goal was to make this guy a one. I'm on that last column. So I divided by negative 10 or multiplied by the reciprocal of negative 10. And then it changed all these signs and it changed a couple of them into decimals, right? Um, but these are nice decimals. I prefer those than 0.3333333, right? That's not a good one, okay? Once I had that one there, then I could go ahead and do these two into zeros. So I would need a positive two times row three plus row one to get me my new row one. And then I would need a negative three times row three plus row two to get me a new row two. So I did my computations here. When I was done, I ended up with those zeros there. And then this is just what I had on the right-hand side after all of that, okay? Now, if you notice, it is the thing that they got here, okay? So I just wanted to show you and not let you think like, oh, I could just know what it is. You cannot just know what it is, okay? There's a whole process that has to go into finding this, okay? They just got lazy and shortcutted it and said, here it is, now multiply, <laughs> okay? So I will include this page whenever I upload the notes so that you can see where those numbers came from, okay? Okay, now that we know that that's the inverse, they're taking the inverse, this is the inverse, and they're gonna multiply it by those constants. And these were the constants in the system, right? So we did the math where we were taking this row times these three guys and adding everything together. This row, second row, times these three guys, you add them all together. And this row times these three guys and you add them all together, right? How did I know it was just gonna be one, two, three? One column only. Remember, this is a three by three and we're multiplying it by a three row by one column, right? So those have in order to do the multiplication and they do, but what I'm left with is a three by one, all right? And so that's how I knew it was going to look like that. Okay, it's just going to be one column with three things in it. Okay. Um, and so then that tells me if this is the X matrix, X matrix is the variables. And these were my variables, weren't they? So it's very straightforward. X is 4,000, Y is 4,000, and Z is 2,000. Okay. And so you do have that solution. I'm mentioning this because um, in the test, we'll get to it when we talk about the review. But in the test, it's all systems, the whole thing. I think you get a couple of easy ones that are just like, what's the augmented matrix? That's it. You just need to put the little numbers in the box and you're done. And then there's one that asks you for the order or the dimensions, right? That one's real easy. You just count how many rows and then how many columns and you're good. All the other problems on this test are going to be solving systems. However, you are instructed on every single problem of which method to use. So you have to make sure that you know all the different methods, okay? And there's quite a few. There's the substitution method. There's the regular elimination method when we just dealt with the equations by themselves. Then eventually we learned the Gauss-Jardin elimination, which involves the matrices. Now we're doing solving equations using an inverse. And then there's one more that's in 10.5, which is Kramer's rule, okay? So there's like four matrix, three actually, three matrix ways to solve systems and then two algebraic ways to solve systems, okay? You will be asked to do all of five of them. So just make sure that you get comfortable <laughs> with all five. Don't just think, oh, I like this one. I'm only gonna do them all like this way. You can't for this test. On the final, I don't care what you do, but on this test, you have to do it the different ways, okay? But we'll talk about them when we get to the review. So some of the other problems I noticed were um, these, and they were basically, tell, they say something like, determine whether A and B are inverses of each other. And so ultimately your answer is yes or no, right? Yes, they're inverses or no, they're not. Um, but they also ask you to find the products because the only way that it is an inverse is if you multiply them together, you get the identity mix, 
okay? And it should work in both ways. So it doesn't matter whether you multiply A on the left and B on the right, or if you put B on the left and A on the right. Both of these products should equal the identity, okay? And so it will ask you, do, are they inverses? And it's gonna say AB equals, and then you need to give them the answer for that product. And then it's gonna say BA equals, and you need to give them the answer for that product. And if they are both looking like this, then you say yes. If even just one of them doesn't look like the identity, then you say no. Does that make sense? So for us, they gave us these two. So I had to multiply everything out, right? So I did this row times this column. So two times three is six. One times negative five is negative five. Then I did this row times this column. So I got negative two and then positive two. Then over here, I did the bottom row times the first column. So five times three, three times negative five. And then I did the bottom row times the second column. So we get negative five times six, okay? When you compute all of those out, I did end up with these entries. And so I did get the identity, right? And then down here, same thing. I just reversed them, right? I put the B in the left side and the A on the right side and then did the same thing. So this one times this one gives me six and negative five. This row times this column gives me three and then negative three. And finally the bottom row times the first column. So I get negative 10, positive 10, and then bottom row and second column. So negative five and then positive six. And when I did these computations, I got the same numbers coincidentally, right? Sometimes it will and sometimes it won't. It just depends on if they're actually inverses, okay? So since I did get I, if it were asking me, are they inverses? I would say yes, right? This one's worded a little different because it's telling me to show that they are, right? So I kind of knew it was gonna come out to eyes, but you need to practice the multiplication for sure. Okay, so here's my practice problems. I think that was the first one, just going back to multiplication. Um, the second practice problem was find the inverse of a matrix. So notice I did the same thing. I took the matrix the way it was given and I put the identity on the other side. Your identity must be the same size as your matrix, right? So if this is a two by two, your identity has to be a two by two. When I did the bigger one, it was a three by three, right? And so my identity was a three by three. Okay, so always make sure you're using the appropriate identity here. Okay, so for me, it was only a two by two. So I just needed one little row of I of ones and then the rest zeros. So I started going through my process here. Now I did it the row operation. So you'll have all the steps doing it the row operation. But in the inverse section earlier in the 10.3, they did give us a formula, right? And it only works for the little baby ones, the two by twos. So I do have a baby one, right? A two by two. So I can use that formula. So I did do it this way. If someone wants to review that and you know verify or try it on their own, you can get the answer. This is the answer, okay? But you can also do it using the formula. So if I use it doing, do it using the formula, this guy is A, this guy is B, this guy is C, and this guy is D, okay? And so the formula says you're going to do AD minus BC. So these guys multiply together minus these guys multiply together. Okay. And then over here, it's like those two, the A and the D switch and the B and the C stay put, but they change signs. Right. So all I did was swap those two guys. So five is here now and two. And then these two guys, the one and the nine stay, but the signs change. Okay. And so then all I have to do is just figure out what this is. And I ended up with 10 minus nine, which is one. So I'm really just multiplying by a one, aren't I? Which is not gonna change any of these entries when I multiply each one by a one, okay? If that were a half, then it would have changed these things, right? I would have had like five halves and negative one half, negative nine halves, and then a one, okay? 
So just make sure whatever you get here that you actually multiply it to everybody and then you'll get your final answer, okay? And they are the same. So this is a lot faster if you have it, right? So I do include it in the notes, um, but there is another way if you don't remember, or if you don't like that for some reason, it's possible. So number three has this one here and it wants us to change it into an inverse. And so I did do it on the other page. And then the last one is more like what you'll see. See what I told you how they give it to you, right? So when they give you the inverse, you really just need to take that and multiply it by these constants. The one thing you have to remember on this problem is that when you do put the, col the constant column, three, six, it has to be on this side. Don't put it on the other side, you get wrong, okay? It has to be A inverse times B. That's how you solve these guys, okay? It has to be on the right-hand side. If you put it on the left, you probably are not gonna get the right answer, okay? So make sure you put it on the right. Okay, um, but I did do all of this problem on the other page. So there's the problem they gave me and they want me to give them the, I, the inverse, but this is a three by three. There's no quick cute formula for the three by three. So I put the three by three inverse on the other side and then I started going for it, right? This has to be a one. So I just changed everybody's signs. That's what this means. Negative one times everybody is gonna change all the signs, right? And so then this is the new row one. Then I wanted to get the zeros here. Um, oh, well, wait, I did one and then I noticed something. And so I didn't do the other one. So here's where I am. I knew that, actually it's not there. I should have circled that guy because I'm on another matrix now, right? I'm not talking about that matrix anymore. I'm talking about the new one. I need to make that a negative three. So I did negative three times row one where the one is at plus row two. And that would replace that row with the zero. But when I did the operations, I got this. And this is what clued me in. There's an issue here, okay? And so I wrote up down the, the next matrix just because I knew there was an issue right here with these three zeros. The issue is, is that when I come over to make this guy a one, I cannot. You cannot make a zero into a one. Remember how we turn things into ones. We just multiply by the reciprocals. Can you multiply by the reciprocal of zero? Reciprocal of zero is undefined, right? So you can't multiply by it. So I was like, wow, I can't do this anymore. And it doesn't matter if I put it at the bottom because even if it were at the bottom, there'd still be a zero here that can't turn into a one, right? So there's really no point in continuing this problem any further. So I just put, since you cannot turn a zero into a one, this row right here is bad. All that means is that we will not be able to continue and get that identity matrix which means that that guy has no inverse, okay? So it does happen that you can do everything right, but there's just no inverse, okay? This guy is non-invertible or singular was the words we used, right? There is, um, it does tell you, it either tells you to find the inverse if possible, and if it's not possible, it either tells you to write impossible or it tells you to write singular, but you just put whatever word it is, okay? So you try, but if you get that three zeros, just stop, you can't do it anymore. Same thing with the other one, the one that had a little formula. If I got a zero down here at the bottom, okay, can you multiply by an undefined number? You can't. So if I had a zero in this denominator, it would be the same thing, there's no worse, okay? But with the three by threes, it's, you gotta go through the process before you realize there's no inverse. Okay, but I did want you to have a reference as to what it looks like when there's no inverse, okay? And then the last problem was the one where we had to find the inverse. Oh, no, we didn't, they gave it to us. So they gave us the inverse. This is what the matrix looks like in its matrix, what the system looks like in its matrix form. And then if I wanted the answers, it would be XY equal to the inverse of this times three, six. 
but they told me what the inverse of that is. It's this, right? So they gave me this, this inverse. So it's just a matter of multiplying. 3, 2 times 3, 6, negative 2, 1 times 3, 6. And when you're done, you end up with this. So then x is 3 and y is 0. Okay. This one's not so bad in the homework because they do give you that inverse. You just take it from here. Okay. It's not as hard as the one where you have to go find the inverse, right? Okay. That's the end of that section, all about those inverses. So remember, if you have a baby inverse, you can use the formula. If you have a three by three and you have to find the inverse, you got to go through all the matrix row reduction. Okay. Um, this one here is all about determinants. Okay. Now, the interesting thing is, is that that formula to find the little baby um, inverse, it has the determinant formula in it. Okay. That denominator is the determinant. This denominator right here, you do A times D, and then you subtract what you get when you do B times C, right? So you go from top left to bottom right, you get that product, and then you go from bottom left to top right, and you get the other product, and then just make sure you subtract them, okay? I mentioned the motion for a reason because we are eventually going to have to find the determinant of the bigger ones, the three by threes, okay? There is a mathematical way to do it that they prefer for you to use, but I've learned that I can apply this same process to the three by three. It just takes a little extra effort, but it's so much less painful <laughs> than the definition way to do it, okay? So I'm going to go through both when I get to that point, but you'll see that there is a same kind of action going on to get that determinant. So just like they defined it here, if I don't know what these entries are, they just used um, subscripts, right? A is for the first column, B is for the second column, and then my subscripts are for what row I'm in, okay? So A1, B1, A2, B2. You multiply going down, and that's a positive. Don't change the sign. Keep the sign, whatever it is. Then you're going to go this way, but you're going to use the minus, right? So you're going to have to change those signs. So let's go practice that motion. So we're going to go this way first. And what is that product? When I multiply them, what do I get? Four. And then I have to put the minus sign, and then I'm going to go this way. What do you get? Mm -hmm. And isn't that negative three going to change this to plus three, right? And so then you get the determinant is just seven here. So these are nice, okay? They're not that bad. If I multiply these guys, I get the four minus. When I multiply these guys, what do I get? Mm -hmm. And it's positive, so it just keeps them negative to where it was, okay? And then I end up with the zero determinant. When you get a zero determinant, that means that guy cannot be, it uh, has no inverse. You're not like, you're not flipping any signs or anything. No. Well, I did because when I did this way, I got a, a positive four, didn't I? But what is written down, what's written down is a negative four, right? A minus four. Okay. But good. I'm glad you asked that question. Okay. What about this one when I multiply that way? Zero. And then when I multiply this way, what do we get? It's trickier, but you can do it in a calculator if you need to. I get just three, right? But because I went this way, it's not three. What is it? It's minus three. Yes, exactly. Or negative. So when I get a negative three at the end. Okay. So when you go in this direction, you're going to keep the same sign. Okay. But when you go that way in the other direction, you're going to change the sign. It's either going to be plus or minus, but the opposite of what it should have been. Okay. So like this one, that's positive. It stays positive. This one should have been positive, but it's not minus, right? Okay. I have to do the other one the ugly way first. I have to show it to you. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to go into like elaborate detail. If you get to engineering and you have to do those 10 by 10 matrices, you will need to know how to do it by cofactors because there's no way to, there's no shortcut with those giant ones. Okay. Well, I guess there could be just be there a while. 
you'll run the paper. If I have 10 rows, I don't have much paper to put another like five of them on the side. You'll see what I mean in a minute. Okay. So here's a three by three. How do I find the inverse of this thing? Okay, now they're telling me that this is the end, but where in the world did all of that come from? Um, I will show you how to do that. It's a little weird. And I don't even think this is the correct format. I don't know where that came from. Um, yeah, I do not think that's the correct thing. I'm gonna erase this just cause I do not think that that's right. I'll write it in there before I post it. But there is a formula. It's super long, though, like super long. Um, nobody remembers that formula, and I don't give you that formula on the test because it's silly. This is how to do it by cofactors, OK? And you can choose which cofactors to use. So let me explain. The first time I did the, the determinant, I chose to use row one as my cofactors, OK? I could have chose row two to be my cofactors, or I could have chose row three to be my cofactors. It is a choice, okay? I also did it again using a column instead of a row. And I chose just to you know, pick something else other than column one, I chose column two. You could have also done it doing column three, okay? You pick a row or a column to be your cofactor, okay? As soon as you pick a row or a column, I'm going to show you how to get this, OK? So if I choose row one as my cofactor, this is what you're going to do. You're going to go one by one by one, OK? So for the first guy here in row one, I basically cover up this row and cover up this column that that guy's in. And see what I'm left with? B2, C2, B3, C3, and that's what's right here, okay? Then when I move on to the second guy, I'm gonna cover his row and his column. And so notice I end up with these guys, right? A2, C2, A2, A3, C3. Then when you go to the last guy in that row, you cover up his row and his column. I said that backwards, but you get it. <laughs> and then I get A2, B2, A3, B3, right? So that's how you get all of this. And then essentially what that means is you're gonna get A1 times this determinant. So B2, C3 minus B3, C2. And then you get this constant times this determinant. So A2, C3 minus C2, A3. And then finally the last um, term times this determinant. Yes, this is the way the book teaches you. And it's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> I do not blame you when you're like, what in the world? <laughs> it is a lot. And as soon as, and I had to go, I went through, what is this class, college algebra? I went through college algebra doing it this way. I went through pre-cal doing it this way. And then I got a really cool calculus teacher that like just made things make more sense to me. And then they showed me a whole nother way. And I was like, why in the world did nobody show me that in college algebra? I've been torturing myself for forever, getting them wrong and having to do it again and getting them wrong and having to do it again. <laughs> so I really, really like the quick way. Um, so, but I have to show you this way because when you get to a four by four, you won't be able to do the same method or it'll be more harder to do the same method. Okay. And then this ends up becoming the easier way. But you're going to see a lot of three by threes more than anything else you're going to see a lot of three by threes okay so i did the same thing but i chose something else right i said you could pick any row or any column and i chose column two so that means i had to focus on these guys okay so one by one by one i started with the b1 there's my b1 and then i covered his row and i covered his column and i got these entries okay then i moved on to the b2 and then I covered that row and I covered, or I'm sorry, I covered the row and then I covered the column and I ended up with these entries here. And then lastly, I moved on to the B3 and I covered his row and I covered his column and I ended up with these guys here. Now here's another thing, other than the one by one and covering the rows. Do you notice what's happening to each term? 
here's a term, here's a term, here's a term, three terms. What's happening in the front of those terms? They're flipping signs, right? When we did the two by two, we only saw this, right? We had a positive one and a negative one. But because it's a three by three, the next one goes back the other way around. It goes to plus again, okay? If you had four of them, right, a four by four, and you had four terms you're going to have to go through, then the next one would be what? A minus, exactly. Okay. So just keep that in mind. You got to watch this recording again later when you see this in, in your engineering class. Hopefully, you don't get an instructor that's just like, we should know how to do that. If so, go Google it, YouTube it, <laughs> just to, you know, beef up on your skill and then go back to that class and that's homework. Okay, so I have to do this by definition and it says, um, not by definition, because I erased the definition. So we are definitely not doing that. Um, use the cofactors of your choice and then use another set of cofactors of your choice. I did notice that it was asking us to do something sort of like that in the homework, okay? And so I wanted to at least just try to give you one. Now, I will be honest with you, the more zeros, the better, because then you don't even have to do this mess. If this is, if I'm gonna multiply by zero, does it even matter what this is? No, right? I could do all that computation for no reason, because as soon as I multiply by that number in front, it's all wiped out, okay? So if you've got zeros in there, <laughs> you want to use that row or that column that has the most zeros, okay? Now we're, Kind of, we've got one row that has one zero, another row that has one zero, one column that has a zero, and another column that has a zero. So there's really no better choice here. You've got four options to include a zero, right? If you want to make things harder on yourself, you could choose the second row or the last column. There's no zeros there, right? Those would be the harder choices, okay? You tell me what you want to use. Do you want to use row one, row three, Column one or column two, pick one. Somebody has got a zero. Row one, okay, so we're gonna use this one. So I'm gonna put the zero in the front and then I'm gonna cover that row and that, uh, that row and that column. So I end up with these guys, right? Now I just like to write them. I don't like to try to find a determinant right away. Some people do, but I make mistakes when I go too fast, so I don't. <laughs> now I'm gonna put my minus sign and the next guy is a two, right? So then let's see, let's cover his row and his column. I'm gonna end up with the three, the two, the four and the one. Now I'm on my third term, so I need to go back to a plus. I'm gonna put that one front and then cover his row and his column, which gives me three, negative one, four, zero. So far, do you see it? Okay. Now, does it matter what this is when I do the determinant? No, because as soon as I multiply by zero, I just get a big fat zero, right? But here, I do need to multiply it. So that times that is three, that times that is eight, but because I went in this direction, it's actually minus eight. Then plus one, this times this is zero, this times this is negative four. But because I'm going in this direction, it actually changes to positive, right? Then let's see. So this zero really isn't gonna change anything. So let's just distribute our two and distribute our one. We get negative six plus 16 plus zero plus four. So what do we end up with? 14, is that right? And it doesn't matter if you did it the way I did it or if you actually just like computed these, right? This and this is negative five. This and this is just four. One times four is four and negative two times negative five is 10. So I get the same answer, don't I? So however you do your operations after the determinants is completely up to you. Just make sure you follow your order of operations. Um, that's pretty much it. It's really weird, this guy. Can I show you now the other way? <laughs> You're like, we're ready for it. <laughs> okay. The other way, and I, I didn't do this second one, but I could have chosen something else and done it again. I didn't do it. It's not that big of a deal. 
So what I want to show you is how to do this determinant since I know what the answer is using a totally different method. Okay, now I am essentially going to apply the same method that I did for the two by twos. We know how to find a two by two matrix. You multiply in this way and you get that answer, which is negative 42, right? And then you multiply this way and you get negative 18. The one that goes in this direction stays the same sign. The one that went in this direction gives you um, the opposite sign. So it should be plus 18. I have no idea what that is. Negative 42 plus 18 is negative 24. So that is how you do them for the two by twos. I want to do the same thing here. Problem. I can do this diagonal. It's a three by three, isn't it? I should have three things in my diagonal. What happens when I try to do the next diagonal? There's a problem, right? There's only two people in that next diagonal. And if I try to do the last diagonal, there's another issue. There's only one guy in that diagonal, right? So here's the trick. Take the first two columns and rewrite them in order. Zero, three, four, two, negative one, zero. Now, don't I have the number of people I need in this direction? Okay, and I've got three of them. So these three by threes, the number three is gonna come out a lot, okay? You have to have three in your diagonal and then there has to be three of those diagonals, okay? Now, let's see what we get when we do these computations. What do I get when I multiply zero times negative one times one? Zero. What do I get when I multiply these three guys together? 16. And then what do I get when I multiply these guys together? Zero. And so these are all gonna stay the same sign. So if that's positive, it's gonna stay plus. If that, that's neutral, it'll be a plus, okay? Now we're gonna go in the other direction. I'm gonna change my color. I don't have enough here. I don't have enough there, do I? But I do have three guys here, okay? And then I have three guys there and I have three guys here. So what's the first product? You multiply all three of these guys together. It would be negative four, right? But we know that when we go in this direction, we gotta change it, right? So yes, it does eventually become positive four. Here you get a zero, but we know we're supposed to be subtracting these guys, right? And then here, what do you get? Six, but you gotta subtract it, yes. And so then if I do all of those computations, what do you end up with? Do you end up with the same 14? You do, right? So isn't this a little bit nicer than all of that culture stuff? <laughs> it's a whole lot easier, okay? So we'll try that on the practice on this one. So you've got the matrix there. Make sure that you rewrite the first two columns exactly the way they are. So notice this column, everything's exactly the way it is. And then we can go. And I like to do all of the little ovals first. So what product do I get here? Negative 32, because mm -hmm. that's 16 and then times two, right? 32. What product do I get here? Zero, but it's a plus because I'm going in this direction. And what product do I get here? Zero, but again, a plus because I'm going in this direction. As soon as I change my direction, I'm gonna have to put minuses or opposite signs. So what do I get here for this product? Minus zero. What about this one? Mm -hmm. And then what about the last one? Oh, we got lucky, they're all zeros, right? <laughs> so then what's the determinant here? Just negative 32. We got super lucky that they all ended up being zero. Normally you get numbers, right? And then you have to compute them. Okay, but that method is so much less nerve wracking than the other one, okay? So definitely if you have three by threes, you can do it the same similar way as the two by twos, okay? Okay, 
we are going to use that a lot, that those two processes. So don't think like, oh my God, you're already going in the next section so quick. <laughs> it's okay, because we're gonna have to use those determinants throughout this entire section. So you're basically gonna get more practice with those, with that section, okay? So the whole purpose of the determinants is so that you can um, use this cool rule that's called Kramer's rule. What this does is it takes out all the drama of solving systems of equations. We already know that we have to do substitution, which is like a whole route. You have to do elimination, which is a whole route. gauss jordan elimination, which is the nightmare, right? And then you've got um, this inverse stuff, which has got gauss jordan in it, right? In order to find the inverse, you have to do the gauss jordan elimination. So either way, both of those are still tough, right? So Kramer's rule is kind of a way to make things a little bit easier when you have to solve a system using a matrix, okay? And what they do is they use determinants in order to do this. And it's super easy to find determinants now, right? So this way is gonna be a lot nicer to solve than using the other methods, okay? Now, they've got some notation in here though. You notice how it just has D all by itself in all of the denominators, right? That's the determinant of the um, coefficient matrix, okay? So D is the coefficient matrix. So if you look at this, D would be two, negative five, negative four, three, and you find the determinant of that, just the determinant of that coefficient matrix. Now, when you start throwing in the subscripts, the DX and the DY and the DZ, okay? What you're basically doing is you're taking that coefficient matrix and you're replacing the X column with whatever's in the constant column. And then when you do the DY, you're taking the coefficient matrix and you're replacing the y column with the constants. And then the last one for dz, if you have a three by three, you have to do the z, right? And then you would have to replace the third column, the z column with the coefficients, okay? So we're gonna start off with one that's just a two by two. So you only need x and y, right? Those are the only variables I have, okay? So we only need to do x and y. Then eventually we'll move into this problem, which is a three by three. Okay, so we'll see it with the three by threes. But for us, for now, we're gonna do D first. So it's just the coefficient matrix. And I'm putting these bars because these bars mean you have to take the determinant. I'm not putting the little matrix symbol like brackets, right? I'm putting, it looks like absolute value bars, but that just means you have to need, you are going to take the determinant. So coefficients, two, negative five, negative four, and three. And when I calculate that, I'm going to get six minus, and then that's a 20. It was a positive 20, right? But now it's a minus. And so my, my determinant of the coefficients is negative 14. Now, in order for me to do dx, I am not going to put the x coefficients here. I am going to put the constants here instead. So that means three and eight go here. The y coefficients do stay the same. It's only the column that has this letter that is gonna get replaced, okay? And so if I do my determinant this one, I get nine minus, that's a negative 40. So it's actually gonna turn it to plus 40 and I get 49. Then now we do dy. So this time the y column gets replaced with the constants and the x column stays as the original. So two and negative four, right? Two and negative four. We do the same thing again. We get 16 minus, and that actually turns to plus 12. And so what is that? Uh, 28, right? Okay. And so then if I wanna know what x is, I just need to take the dx value over the d value. So 49 over negative 14. What is that? It's negative seven halves. And then y, I do dy over d. So I got 28 over negative 14. I know that one, but we'll type it in here anyway. We get negative two. So then what is your answer as a point? Mm-hmm. And negative two, you got it. 
but isn't that a whole lot faster than all the other things we've been doing, right? So this was like the end game <laughs> for the whole chapter was to be able to do this, okay? We had to learn about inverses and then determinants and all this other stuff just to get to this Kramer's rule, okay? So let's go try this problem. I don't know what it looks like. I think it's one of those electrical engineering problems. But let's go see. So 10.5, number six. 10.5 and number six. I think it's one of those big ones. Yeah, it is. It's this. But the, I mean, you don't, if you don't know in electrical engineering, don't worry about getting this and coming up with this <laughs> system. When you do take your engineering class, you will be given this graph and then you will learn how to come up with this system, okay? Right now, we're not working on engineering yet. We're just working on the mechanical stuff, which is your math stuff. Math is just your tool for engineering and science, okay? So yeah, you can figure out what needs to happen here by using math, but your engineering part is gonna be on translating this into something with math, okay? We're not doing engineering yet in this class, so I don't go through all of that. But we're gonna take this system. So let me write it down. Four I one, no I two, plus eight I three equal to 22. Then two I two plus eight I three equals to 66. And then I one, what is that? plus I2 minus I3 equals zero. I did teach a class, they got a, went away with it, but I did teach a class that does show you how to do that, but we don't need to worry about it yet in this class. Okay, so there's the system that they gave me and they asked me to solve it using Kramer's rule, okay? So the first thing I need to do is come up with those three matrices, D, and then the dx, right? Um, or not dx. In this case, what is my first variable? I1, right? And so I'll need to come up with that matrix. Then I need to do the same thing for I2. So I could come up with that matrix. And then I need to do the same thing for I3 and come up with that matrix. Once I'm done with all three of those, whatever they are, in order for me to find I1, I'm gonna do DI1 over the regular D. And then to find I2, we're gonna do DI2 over the regular D. And then finally the last one over the regular three. Oops, the regular D. So this is the Kramer's rule. What we're about to do is just the mechanical part of it, right? So let's compute. So for the D without a subscript, you have to take all the coefficients just as they are. So for the first couple of I's, it's going to be 4, 0, and 1, right? For the I ones. And then for the I twos, it's going to be 0, positive 2, and positive 1. And then for I threes, it's going to be 8, 8, and negative 1, okay? I'll do the computations after I set up everybody, okay? Now for this one, the I1 column, this column right here is going to be replaced with the constants, okay? So instead of these numbers, it's gonna be the constant numbers. So 22, 66, and zero. The other two columns stay exactly the way they were. Now for the DI2, it's the middle column that's going to change, okay? So that's where the 22, the 66, and the 0 go. And these other two columns on the outsides are going to stay the same. It's easier for me not to lose focus on what I've changed and all of that if I just do them all, set them up, and then do the computations later, okay? 
And finally, the I3, it's the last column that's going to get the constants. So 22, 66, and 0. And then the first two columns will stay the same. And then from here, I can do my process, right, where I repeat the first two rows, do all the multiplications, and then combine. So let's go ahead. We're going to do this four times. So let's just go through it. When I multiply these guys, what do I get? Negative eight. And it stays as is. When I multiply these guys, it kind of is not right, but it's supposed to be those three. What do you get? Zero, so plus zero. And then when I multiply these guys, zero. zero. Would have helped if I wrote these big in like the other numbers. Now the other way. I'm going to do this product. Oops. Should be 16, but then because of the direction, it's going to be negative, right? Then when I multiply these, 32, you're right, but it has to be negative. And then finally, this one, zero, and then it would be negative, but same thing. So what do we get after all of that computation? I think it's eight, negative eight minus 16. Oh no, it's gonna be huge because they're all negative. Okay, so I got negative 56. Okay, it's a big number. I've had some of them like 200 and something. All right, just work it out. You're going to see it unfold when you do the division. Okay. So let's do the same thing for the next one. I'm going to do 22, 66, 0, 0, 2, and 1. And then let's do that first triple diagonal. What do we get there? It'll be negative 44, right? And then what about this one? zero, but I'm put plus because of the direction. And then this one, oh gosh, I don't know. This huge number, right? But it's going to be the same sign, so positive. Now we'll go in the other direction. So there's my triple. So I'm going to do zero, but with a minus. This triple, which is 176 positive, but then it has to be a minus, right? And then now this triple, which would be a zero, but it has to be a minus. And so what do we get? Let's see, negative 44 plus 528 minus 176. We get positive 308. Don't worry about the numbers being big. It probably can reduce with this negative 56 real nice. Okay, change again, first two columns. I'm gonna rewrite and then start the diagonal business. So here we go. I do not know that number, but it'll be a negative, right? So it'll be negative 264. Then this product, but I already did that, yeah, I did. 176 and what symbol? Yes, and then this product, but still a plus, right? Now we go the other direction. This triple, which I think was the 528, but let me make sure. Oh no, it's 66. Yeah, it is the 528. Now I get positive 528, but what goes in the front? Mm -hmm. Then this product, zero, but we put minus, and then this product, zero, but we put minus. And so let's see, negative 264 plus 176 minus 528. We get negative 616, okay? Now we're going to go to our answer part, and we're going to fill in everything. So for I1, we get DI1, which is 308. Oh, I'm missing. I forgot one, didn't I? I'm going too fast. <laughs> Negative 56 for D. And I don't know what that is. 308 over negative 56. That's a negative 11 over 2. Nice, right? 
Now I2 is going to be that negative 616 over the negative 56. So let's see, negative 616 over negative 56. And that one turns out to be a regular letter. Interesting. I went too fast because do I know the last one? I haven't done it yet, right? <laughs> I thought I was ready, but I wasn't yet. So let's repeat these two columns. Four, zero, one, zero, two, one. And we'll go through the process. So when I multiply those together, what do I get? Zero, when I multiply these together, what do I get? I'm gonna put a plus and then these three. Plus zero. Now this way. Uh-huh, but the direction means minus, right? And then this way, I think it's 264. And it would be positive, but because of the direction, I got to change it, right? And then the last one, zero. And again, minus or plus wouldn't matter, but just to be consistent with what we're doing, I put the minuses. So let's see, negative 44 minus 264. That's negative 308. So I don't need to do it in my calculator again. It's gonna be the same answer, but this one's gonna be what? Positive. So I'm gonna get a positive 11 over two. Okay. And so then if they, how do they want your answer? Does it have boxes or just one box? It does have separate boxes. So you could just type them each in there, okay? You don't have to put it in point form. This one's the exact same thing. You don't have to worry about pulling. You'll learn that in physics. You don't have to worry about pulling the pulley information into a matrix. It's already there, okay? You just need to do all the little matrices and then do your work. What is the first variable? T1. What is the second variable? And then what's the third variable? Not T3. It's A. Uh-huh. So I tricked you on there, right? Don't let it distract you, okay? <laughs> I just wanted to mention that because I threw me off for a second when I looked at it, okay? But that is it. I told you guys this stuff was gonna be able to go real, real fast, right? These last two sections are not super hard, okay? But you do gotta do them so that you can remember that rhythm of the problems, right? So practice, practice. Does anybody have any questions? At the beginning? Yeah. Oh yes, we'll do that. This one here, we did just the coefficients. So nobody's getting replaced yet by the constants. So it's just four, zero, one, and then zero, two, one, and then eight, eight, and negative one. So it was just this matrix, just the coefficient. And so we repeated and then did the whole mess, right? After that, you had to repeat, you have to replace the first column with the answers, then the second column with the answers, and then the third column with the answers. Okay, any other questions? No? Okay, well then I will see you guys tomorrow so we can start on that review, okay? If you try to do it beforehand, that would be even better, right? That way you know exactly what you need to concentrate on that you need to see me do, okay? But you guys have a good day. I hope to see you tomorrow. And as soon as I post these up, I'll send out that remind message, okay?